Okay, and there are small rules. So, yeah, the whole meeting will be recorded and we list the four demos and each demo has maximum 20 minutes time slot and 50 minutes for the demo itself and the last five minutes uh, is for Q&A session. And during the demo, you might have questions, uh, but please ask them in the Q&A session. Uh, that helps us to make a good uh, YouTube video later. And also, even after you we finish this demo, uh, you can always contact us on the Discord channel. OK. And we are planning to have the first uh, release 0 0.7 brief in instructions and introductions from Andre. And now I see Andre. So I would like to hand over to Andre. Thank you, Rina. So let me share the screen. OK, so just a short uh, intro from my side, uh, what we added in the 0 0.7 release. Um, so first of all, um, what we worked on is the uh, improvement of the um, uh, demo, daemon process handling and, and uh, we added a watchdog functionality. So the health of the thin edge or th daemon processes, like for example, th uh, mapper or the, the uh, thin edge agent can be now monitored by MQTT. So that means that these demons expose MQTT health endpoints. You will see that, uh, I guess, in the de de demo, how you can use that and monitor uh, those components to check if the processes are still active or not. And um, uh, the, what we also added is a system D watchdog features. Um, so this really helps you to detect whether a service in, is healthy or, or, or not or unresponsive. And um, it will attempt to, to fix it, for example, by restarting the service. So a watchdog functionality, which I think most people are familiar with. Uh, another big area that we added, and this is uh, really in the beginning specific or uh, available as a plugin for Cumulosity only, uh, is the configuration management. So um, with plugins, you can define which configuration files you want to manage remotely um, and as I said, we started with Cumulosity. That means that you can add the entry, entries of the configuration files, so all types of configurations that you might have on Synedge, um, into, uh, into uh, another configuration. And then um, all of those configuration can be um, managed remotely with the uh, Cumulosity IoT configuration management feature. And um, for, with this, you can, for example, uh, manage the configuration of components like the Mosquito Bridge configuration or in general, any type of config file that you might want to use. Um, another feature we added is the uh, log uh, retrieval. Uh, so you can now define what types of uh, logs you want to expose to your IoT platform. So we have done some um, improvements here and added another plugin uh, to be supported with Cumulosity and with the um, uh, custom smart rest 2.0 templates uh, we also added a highly uh, anticipated and requested functionality again for cumulosity to freely uh, define the mqtt messaging between uh, thin edge um, uh, io and uh, the cumulosity it platform and now handing over back to to rena to um, to come to the practical part yes thanks andre so now the time to start the demo. And the first demo is a configuration management plugin for Cumulosity, and I would like to start. So with the configuration management, uh, Cumulosity has a feature. You can configure the, uh, you, you can upload the configuration file from device to Cumulosity and also download the file from Cumulosity to device. Um, yeah, first I'm going to show you the very basic uh, use case and afterwards I'm going to dive into the uh, more technical cases or corner cases, let's say. Okay, um, so first uh, how to 
install your package. And these things, uh, how to install the package, how to get the binary for configuration plugin demo, uh, uh, it's already uh, described in, sorry, um, in the, our documentation. And I choose the way uh, going uh, using a get CHIO script. So get CHIO script, probably you might know, uh, you can install all packages uh, related to CHIO. And then here I have already installed everything here. And then uh, the first thing uh, I need to do is uh, Tetch Connect to Cumulosity. So this is important. Um, let's connect to see it why. Um, my device has already configured uh, everything. So how to connect to Cumulosity. Okay, and then uh, from here, it's very, uh, this new Cumulosity configuration plugin specific thing. Um, now you have this new directory, etc tetch cty, and this inside the cty directory, uh, you have cty configuration plugin, uh, tomer file. This is the configuration file of the plugin itself. So this is a default. After you get the installation, you get this file. So now everything commented out. So I'd like to change a bit. A bit. Okay. okay, now I want to manage etc test test mail file and also bridge configuration. Yes, then save it. Okay, then now I prepared my configuration file for the plugin and then time to start the conf uh, CTY configuration plugin service. Just uh, using uh, systemd service. Uh, yes, and we can check the status. Yes, now it's running. So let's go to Cumulosity. Now almost everything is ready. Okay, this is my device. It's connecting to Cumulosity. If you go to configuration, um, wait a moment. I think it's huh, something. Okay, this is a live demo. It can happen. Uh, okay. Let's see, that's set Y and set Y configuration. Probably, yes, I saved correctly. And Yeah, restart the plugin. Thank you. Configuration. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, restart. Uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's already started. I didn't know that. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Then now. Uh, so I said that um, I want to manage desktop mail and CTY bridge, mosquito cough and the mosquito, and you see it is desktop mail configure uh, bridge and mosquito cough and this mosquito cough. So. Then we can compare. Okay, the uh, okay. The, these are the same as uh, uh, now the uh, sorry. I reported the uh, supported the configurations the same as we configured here, and so now everything you can get. 
So this is uh, how you can get the uh, configuration file content from device to Cumulosity. And now let's apply something new to Cumulosity. And now you see I modified the CTY configuration somehow. Uh, but yeah, I want to have I want to apply something new configuration file to the plugin. Uh, okay, then in this case, uh, going to the configuration repository. Uh, okay, I'm going to delete this one because I want to upload the same one. And cumulative mm -hmm. default. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want. And then, of course, if you dry it off. Uh, sorry, can you mute it? Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, then configuration type. I choose CTY configuration plugin and the drop the file okay, default configuration. Then we can go back to the device. And this default is the one uh, I just uploaded to Cumulosity. So everything commented out. Then now I'm going to apply this one. Okay, it says uh, successful. Then reload the page. Then now you see uh, only CTY configuration plugins reported because uh, you in the configuration file you report really nothing. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very basic use cases of uh, use case of. Uh, a configuration plugin, and then let me dive into it in detail. Um, so, if you are running something, uh, some other service, for example, Mosquito, if you change the configuration of Mosquito, uh, you need to restart the Mosquito service. If you have third party plugin, then it might uh, you might need to do the same thing. So in this case, how can you get the notification from configuration plugin? Um, this is uh, by MQTT. Uh, now, okay, it's MQTT sub. Let's listen the local host so with that MQTT sub. Okay, then let's apply one com configuration file change. Okay, default again. Then send configuration to Cumulosity, uh, not Cumulosity, sorry, device. Then now you see uh, here, the uh, configuration plugin, management plugin, publishes uh, one message on MQTT. The topic name is stage configuration change slash uh, configuration type. So now the configuration type is CTY configuration plugin. So that's why here you see configuration, CTY configuration plugin. And the, also has a payload. A uh, payload says the path to the configuration file. So if you have some, uh, if you if you subscribe, uh, that configuration change the configuration type, then you can get a notification via MQTT uh, when the configuration file is up updated. This is uh, one case for about notifications. And the second, uh, I want to show you the malformed. So, yeah, everybody can make a mistake. So, it can happen uh, if uh, if you apply malformed uh, plugin configuration to the device, uh, what will happen? So, this is what I'm going to show now. Uh, this case, this is malformed. Why? Uh, because uh, here we have same content. So type uh, must be unique. If you declare the same type twice, and we consider this uh, plugin configuration file is uh, malformed. And let's apply this one. Actually, it's successful. Um, we don't check it. Uh, uh, we check it, uh, okay, so, but we don't reject uh, to apply this malformed file. But in this case, uh, don't worry, you won't break 
uh, your system. So later, what you will see is the just only um, C A T Y configuration plugin. So, for example, if you have already a lot of configuration before, then you try to uh, up update the plugin configuration. Then you can notice. Oh, now reporting only C A T Y configuration plugin. Then you see that, oh, I'm, I configured wrongly. And then from Cumulosity, uh, you can fix uh, the malformed configuration. OK, uh, this is the case malformed. And the third one, I want to say the file permissions. So the configuration plugin, uh, we so there's also some uh, optional key uh, you can write user group mode. Uh, first, let me apply this configuration file. So now this etc test c where test text. This one does not exist to uh, my device, so we can go that this so this directory may be better to see. Okay, so this directory etc test c at y this is test c at y then we don't have it in this case. Um, okay, uh, so current configuration file says so get the snapshot from device again. Um, so but you can say that I want to create test text file uh, with user, order by user, text and group text, and permission 600. Then now we can apply this and send the configuration to device. Then it's successful. Now you see that you get a new file in this directory. Uh, Permission 600 and owner uh, touch touch. Yes, this is uh, exactly what you configured. And um, not this one, sorry. Um, exactly what you configure here. And also, as a case, you can, if you don't configure user group, uh, but you just want to say this permission should be 444. This is a uh, Then now you have 444 and owned by root. Uh, this is, uh, and if you already have the file here, uh, for example, okay, test, test.txt, and I'm going to create new test.txt. So this time, uh, test the text is uh, owned by root root and uh, permission is uh, 644. And we have test text again, we apply. In this case, the plugin will use uh, the original uh, information for owner and the permission. So you can see. So this time, plugin ignores your configuration because the file is already exist, and just using the same uh, order and same permission, and but this is a by the different. So now content is uploaded, uh, updated. Okay, uh, so this is for file permission, and I have really last thing uh, for developer. Uh, good information for developer. So if you don't want to uh, use a Debian package to install, uh, there's a, a good helper uh, command line argument from CATY configuration plugin. So first, uh, let me stop the service. So now I have CATY 
configuration plugin. So actually, we have this touch this in it, and so uh, in with thin edge, uh, if you want to uh, have the new operation with cumulosity, uh, we say that uh, you need to have. Uh, Operations, uh, C at Y, and you need to have the file under etc. Touch operation C at Y, and if you run this touch dash dash init, um, this command will create uh, these two files here, and I always etc. Touch operation C at Y, and also. Uh, in the beginning, you saw the one uh, sample configuration file, uh, etc. Touch C at Y, um, and also this this sample configuration file will be created by touch just in it. So this command will uh, is very helpful when you don't use Debian package. Okay. Um, yes, that's. All what I wanted to show you this time. Uh, then now we can enter the Q and A time. Uh, do you have any questions? If I if I run the configuration plugin as a Debian package. Yes. Um, I have to create the files you've just said by myself, right? You don't need to create the file by yourself. If you use Debian package, so after you install Debian package, you will have these uh, operation files and also the sample uh, plugin configuration ah, okay. file. Yep. So the Debian file will also cause it in it. Exactly, yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And any other question? The notification uh, will currently only tell which file pass has changed, right? Yes, uh, the payload having is payload has only pass to the configuration file. And the type uh, you will see from the pay, uh, topic name. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. As a question. Okay, then, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have more questions, so you can uh, ask us in the Discord channel. Yeah, thanks so much. Then the next demo is uh, about log file management plugin for Cumulosity. So, Alex. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll just share my screen. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be demoing the C to Y log plugin. It's also a daemon like uh, Rena showed. And uh, if you have a Debian package, you uh, if you're connected to Cumulosity um, and install this Debian package, then uh, it will run the init and uh, also should uh, should activate it so we can see that it's now initialized and um, it's ready to go so what the um, if you now go to etc edge c y uh, you will see that there is this uh, c y log plugin.toml 
and if you edit this file, uh, you can see that you have a configuration for the for the log daemon and where you specify a path and a type of logs. So for example, this keeps the old by default you will have the old the old software manage uh, the old um, log plugin um, configuration, which was the software management logs, uh, which will point to uh, the the logs to for both software list and software update. So notice that you don't need to specify a full path for it to pick up those files. You can you can you can give a glob pattern, so you can specify so it's for any log files that start with software, for example, and this will pick up two file types, software list and software update for, for Cumulosity. And if you go to um, Cumulosity, then um, user logs, you will see that um, the software management log is here. And um, so to, to add a new type, you will simply to add a new type, you will simply um, duplicate this line, um, give a new type, for example, mosquito. And and you would give the path to mosquito logs. Which I think is var log mosquito mosquito log, and save this. Um, just before saving, I'd like to show the mosquito sub log. So, once you save this file, you can see that it automatically sends uh, the new file type to here mosquito to Cumulosity. So, if I if I go back here on my drop down. I need to refresh this, but um, it automatically updated the, the log type. So now we have two log types, mosquito and software management, and I can I can request uh, the mosquito logs or I can request the software management logs. Refresh, yeah. I also want to show that um, if I if I add a new entry that's um, so that is wrong, for example, which has some file name that doesn't exist, this will again update this here with the new um, file type. And if I if I refresh. I can request that log and it would fail. And if I go to control, we can we can get a nice reason that says no logs available for type mosquito wrong with a hint is your path key correct. And yeah, that should help. It should help users realize that oh, I didn't mean to have mosquito. Uh, it was the wrong path and yeah. OK, so any so I think I just want to uh, highlight that anytime you make a change to this file, uh, it will automatically update on Cumulosity. So you should only need to refresh this um, to get a new log type. And yeah, you can you can have as many logs as you'd like here. And um, the paths that you provide can be full paths, as you can see here, or they can be um, Glob pattern paths. Yep. Thank you. I think that's all I had to, to demo. Are there any questions? And I, I have a question. Uh, is there a reason why you? Um, why you detect uh, the change of the file only in this plugin, not in the other plugins, or in the configuration plugin, for example, so we had to, to restart the plugin? <laughs> it, 
in fact, it's because we don't use the same mechanism behind the scene, and it's true. Um, I noticed the same issue. Um, in fact, the, uh, uh, so in that case, for the log plugin, uh, yes, uh, file changes are detected. And for the configuration plugin, I think it's with uh, something to improve because uh, coming from the cloud, I don't know if you noticed that, but coming from the cloud, the change was noticed because the configuration plugin was using the notification and over MQTT. But when you change the file directly on the device, the configuration plugin uh, see nothing. So the, uh, there, is some, you know, there is something to change here. Uh, this is not consistent as you noticed. Yeah, and you don't really have to restart this service itself. So uh, there is actually an MQTT message that you can send that will basically force the configuration plugin to reload, uh, reload the file. Yeah, reload the updates to that configuration file. So this was done that way to avoid any, uh, to avoid reading a partially updated file back then. Uh, but yeah, I think we have a better handling of better way to handle uh, broken configuration files as, as well currently. So the file based notification mechanism can be implemented for configuration plugin as well, just like it's done for log plugin. But in the interim, after a configuration plugins, uh, plugin is a uh, plugins configuration file is updated, you can just send a MQTT message and that will uh, make the plugin reload its configuration. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, are there any are there any more questions? If not, I'll um, pass on to the next presenter. Okay, thanks, Alex, for the nice presentation. Oh, sorry. Okay, and then uh, we have the next topic. Uh, CHJ, uh, so, sorry, CHIO demo health check mechanism. Uh, then Alvin. Yeah, everyone. So let me share my screen first. And uh, yeah. this is the uh, this is the feature that I'm going to demonstrate today. So how you can monitor the health of edge uh, daemon processes, which are like the thin edge agent, the thin edge mappers, primarily the velocity mapper, assure mapper, and uh, collect D mapper. Okay. So uh, the the mechanism is that so we have exposed some health check endpoints uh, for all these thin, uh, thin edge daemon processes. Okay, and you can actually request, you can actually send a health check message to these daemons, and then they'll actually respond back. If they are alive, they will respond back uh, with the aliveness uh, response. Okay, so that is what I'm going to show you first. So I'll start by subscribing to this TEDG health endpoint. Okay, so this is where uh, the this is where the thin edge daemon will send its health check response to. Okay, and the way to health check a mechanism, uh, health check a component is something like this. Okay. For example, if I want to check the health of uh, check if thin edge agent is alive. Okay, so what you can do is send an MQTT message to TEDG health check health check. TEDG agent topic, so the name of the uh, the service, and you just send any message, an empty message as well, it will work. Okay, so send some dummy message to it. If you send that, in the other tab, you can see that there is a response on TEDG health endpoint. Okay, so this is how uh, the request response contract is, and the response in its body, it will have status up, signifying that it's up, and uh, the the process ID of the currently running process as well. Okay. So you can do a similar thing for other thin edge daemons as well. So for example, uh, if I want to help check the cumulosity mapper, so this is the name of the cumulosity mapper service. So th that's the that's the contract again. Uh, the last thing in the top message topic, MQTT topic is the name of the service that you would like to check the health of. So if I send that, you will see that it will 
respond back once again on the health topic. Now, if you don't want to do the health check individually for each and every component, uh, but would like to uh, see which all components are available. So out of all the uh, thin statements that are running on this uh, on this machine, which all services are available, if you would like to see such a summarized uh, response, then instead of health checking each individual component, what you can do is you can send a generic or wildcard uh, health check to just this topic, TED health check, without specifying the, the component name itself. And if you send that, then every component that's alive and running will respond back. So in this case, you can see that uh, the response are coming from TED agent, the collect D mapper, the cumulosity mapper, and the Azure mapper that are running on this machine. Okay. So yeah, this is basically uh, the health check contract that we have implemented for uh, thin edge daemons, all the thin edge daemons. And yeah, this will be done for all future daemons, if any, that we implement as well. Okay. So this is the health check mechanism that I wanted to showcase. Now, coming to the next part of the demo. So this is basically a practical uh, use case of this health check mechanism. So now that we have enabled this health check mechanism, can we use it somewhere for some realistic purpose, right? So we have used it for the to enable the system D watchdog mechanism that's provided by system D uh, for all of our uh, thin edge statements, which are managed as system D services in Debian based distributions. Okay. So for that, so just a quick uh, summary of the watchdog mechanism. So watchdog works in this way that if a system D service, so for example, thin edge agent, TED agent service is configured to be watched by the system D watchdog, then system D will expect this process or the service to notify system D at regular intervals. OK, and if this notification breaks, uh, then system D will assume that that particular process is dead or stuck in some dead loop or something, something like that. So it's not really functional anymore. It's not alive anymore. And then system D will go and restart that particular component. OK, so this is the system D uh, contract. Now uh, we have enabled this watchdog mechanism for all of these agents as well with the help of another component called TED watchdog. OK, so we'll just show you uh, how that works. So for example, for that, the first thing that we have to do is update the service definition of the service that you would like to enable uh, TED uh, system D watchdog for. So in this case, I'm going to enable it for the TED mapper, the cumulosity mapper service. OK, and to enable watchdogs, all you have to specify is this particular value, watchdog sec. Okay. So what it means is that now if the watchdog sec is 10 seconds, this means that systemd will be ex expecting notifications, systemd notifications from this particular service every 10 seconds. Okay. So it will keep checking every 10 seconds, and if it doesn't really get those notifications in those 10 second intervals, then systemd will kill and restart the process. Okay, so that's a contract. So first I'll save it. Now <clears throat> there is one more thing. So then comes the TED watchdog component that I talked about. Now in our implementation, we haven't made these uh, TED uh, these daemons, the next daemons to send the notifications to systemd directly because these TED daemons are not just designed for systemd based systems, but can be can work on any other uh, any non Debian uh, operating system flavors as well. Right. So we didn't want to bake the system notification mechanism into the services, but we have actually outsourced it or externalized that notification mechanism to another service. OK, so for that, what you have to do is start this thing called. Come on. Uh, yeah, start this thing called TED Watchdog. So what this watchdog will do is this watchdog will health check, uh, health check the mapper service itself. OK, so this actually acts as the man in the middle, uh, the middle of the mapper service and system D. OK, and this watchdog will continuously health check the services and then will send notifications to system D on their behalf. OK, so this is the guy who is sending the notification, not uh, the service itself. OK, and he will. Continuously do the health checking. 
OK, so I'll start uh, this in the background. And uh, now in the if you check the log of the watchdog, you can see that it's it has enabled for uh, touch mapper C8Y service. Now let me just reload and restart the service. And then you can see that. So now you can see if you check the uh, health endpoint, you can see that every 10 seconds, our watchdog is actually continuously health checking the mapper service. OK, so it will keep getting these responses. OK, and it will be sending the system the notification also on its behalf in the background. OK, so this is how the touch watchdog mechanism works. And here, as you can see, our mapper process is also running. OK, now if you obviously if you break this man in the middle, which is uh, the watchdog. Yeah, if I stop the watchdog, then there is no health checks happening, meaning there is no system notifications happening either. So in that case, what will happen is that these watchdog timeouts will happen for the server. Oh, sorry, uh, for the, the actual touch mapper service and then system D will restart it. So here it has restarted. But again, since the notification mechanism is not working, it will keep on restarting it every 10 seconds. So this will keep happening until I restart the uh, service back. OK, so for example, now if I start the service back up, then it should be. It should be alive again and uh, we can see probably, yeah, the notifications, the health checks are happening again. So the text watched watchdog is the service that keeps uh, the actual services alive by sending notifications on their behalf. And this can be done for uh, all the text daemons that I showcased earlier. So you can currently I've only enabled this uh, watchdog for the stretch mapper C8Y, but by updating the service definitions of the other uh, the other services like the niche agent, the niche mapper, Azure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can enable the same for these services as well. And uh, yeah, that's all I had to demo. Any questions? If not, yeah. Thank you so much. Over to you, Rina. Thank you, Arvin, for the great presentation. Now, uh, time for the last demo. Uh, the title is uh, Custom Smart REST 2.0 Template Support for Cumulosity and from Lucas. Hello, everyone. I'm just sharing my screen and we can start. Mm, I suppose you can see my screen now. So, <clears throat> um, the Cumulosity has this feature called custom templates. Uh, these are templates which you can define in your uh, tenant code for the device type. I uh, just have one example here. This is just template 777 is the name. And you can use that to send custom operations and, and custom measurements, whatever, not, not, not defined in the, uh, with this MQT static template. So uh, until now, uh, it was not easy and straightforward to make it work with, with uh, Finage. Uh, so we've now added an option in the configuration of Finage that you can uh, now use those templates. So uh, there is a new uh, configuration uh, setting, which is called CHY Smartress Template. Uh, it's basically a set of uh, templates, which going to auto cause uh, whenever you connect uh, creation of the bridge topics uh, that you can now receive and send both templates. Um, so just to, to show you, so uh, the templates. Uh, sorry, go on, click this. Uh, so currently, if you, if, if you look on your configuration, these templates are an empty array. Uh, it's basically an array of strings. So whenever I want to declare a new template, I just uh, I just tell what templates I want to uh, add. So in my case, I'm just going to add the template one uh, for now. And when I list this again, you can see that it has now been populated. So. Um, we only require you to put the templates, uh, the part, the template ID, 
because that will cause creation of the topics, uh, proper topics uh, for your uh, Fetch Connect. Um, so I'll just now try. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So now I'll run my Fetch Connect, which I hope will not fail this time. Uh, and what you will see, okay, sorry. Yeah, what you will see is, is that uh, the template will uh, add the new topics uh, to our bridge configuration. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's start happening here. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then what we have, uh, cut and in our bridge, we'll see that two new topics have been added to the bridge. So if you would have not set any of the topics, these two topics would not exist in your configuration file. Uh, but otherwise, based on the template ID, template name, which you put in your uh, in your configuration, that these two uh, receiving and uh, upload topics will, will, will be uh, added to the bridge. That unfortunately requires you to restart the connection, but yeah, for the time being, I think that, that should should just work. So now we can send messages to. Uh, Templates. Let me just quickly see. I should have something. So, uh, so before I've created uh, seven seven seven. So, uh, I think that that should work. If I just send it, it's been successfully sent. And I believe otherwise, if I put not correct ID, that will return an error that this template ID does not exist. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's all I have to show you. Uh, just to add maybe, uh, so unsetting. Uh, so if you don't, if you want to remove all of your templates, uh, we have this uh, feature called unset uh, or subcommand in your config. So uh, you just specify which one you want to unset and then these will be cleared. Um, if you want to set more than one template, uh, you have to pass it as a list. So for example, I need to have template two, for example, and that would now have two templates separately, and there, therefore, whenever we create the, oh, sorry, maybe this won't fail. Uh, whenever we, we create the topics with fetch uh, connect disconnect or disconnect connect, I hope the same works both both times. The seconds, and if we cut that bridge, you will see there you have for each of the templates two sub topics created uh, always. Uh, okay, that's all I have to show you guys. Any questions, please? Uh, thanks, Lukas. So it, it, it's assuming that you're creating the templates uh, or first manually either in the UI or, or somehow else, or it, does it also support? Yeah, so this, this, this not, does not cover creation of the templates. It, create, it, it covers usage of the templates. So yes, that you are correct. Okay, thanks. If, if that would be something you're interested in having having additional tools on the edge to to create those templates. Uh, from, cust from customer perspective, this is definitely a topic um, mm -hmm. because um, it it is an easier way to deploy um, solutions to to the tenant. Um, otherwise, you have to do this manually, or you have to have um, another endpoint and have to sync them. And if the agent or synergy take care of that, that would be really beneficial. Okay. I mean, we certainly can think about extension of that. Uh, Andre or Didier, you, I suppose I, I can advise if, if you can create a ticket uh, in GitHub for the time being, we will prioritize and, and try to groom it. It's one quick question here, Stefan. Is is custom template such a commonly used feature in Kimlocity? Yes. Hmm. Because because the static templates are very limited uh, in, in what you can send. Um, if it comes to a customer case, you most likely use custom templates. Right. So this is a really, really helpful um, um, addition um, now supporting the custom templates into the Synage. I also have a small remark um, regarding mm -hmm. the templing naming, and I'm not sure if this is working, but um, it's kind of best practice that you give a version to the template in the ID. Is this uh, supported? What do you mean? Is, is that something that is, is a part of the name of the? Yes, uh, in the ID. 
yeah, it, it's template one, and then you have some, you know, dash, and then version one dot zero or something like that. Yes, that should not be a problem. Uh, we haven't tested that though, but but I don't believe that should be a problem. The, the thing, the background behind that is, um, unfortunately, if a field change as a device sending a new measurement, uh, and you want to update the template, you don't want to create just a new template from scratch, but you version that, and then you have the version of the template is 1.1. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, a version for smart, uh, smart REST templates in Comolosity, so mm -hmm. the workaround or the best practice is to uh, add this information to the ID. So if, if you're still looking at my screen, that would be yeah. something like the template 3-11 or underscore 1.1, yeah. 1. 1, yeah, something, something like, like that, right? that yeah. yeah, correct. Uh, let's quickly see. Uh, I believe that should be just fine. Yeah. So, so that that's picked up without any issue, uh, and therefore the appropriate topics should be created. So, obviously, this will be ah okay. So, currently there is no restriction what you, what characters you can put in here, uh, but in terms of creating the the topics here, there would be standard MQTT restrictions applied yes, to that. So, if you would like to use like no, I suppose percentage character or something like that. Uh, that would fail when creating the topics. So we would need to probably add some, some kind of feature or something. But again, if you can ask for, for an extension or give us better use case, I, I, I'm sure we can we can improve as, as, as you ask. Yeah. Uh, did someone have raising their hand? Yeah, that's me. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, Lucas, for the presentation. I have a question regarding the initial rollout of devices. So I mean, Something that comes now to my mind, uh, and I know it was not specified in the initial issue ticket uh, from, from uh, on GitHub. If I do have a device that is registered to Cumulosity, and and then I probably later out in the production state, I probably do not have shell access anymore, for example. So what I would kind of like or assume here is that I could configure this maybe via configurations, right? So. Yes. How how do you plan that this this reconfiguring of smart REST templates could be achieved via the standard device management capabilities of Cumulosity? So I mean, we can do restart. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. But would you put so, it in configurations, or how do you do that? Yeah. So so I I suppose I, I mean don't don't treat it as an out of the box solution I'm giving you. But I suppose yeah, the okay. way, yeah. where you could uh, go with that is use the configuration management plugin which was presented today. Have the touch toml because all of that is uh, put in the. Uh, I don't know really if I'm still on time. Just don't want to, to you know extend it too much. Uh, but basically, all of that configuration is this touch toml file, right? So if you use your configuration management plugin uh, to to be able to modify that uh, file, uh, I believe then then you will be able to modify this this part this variable here. It's standard toml uh, is an array of strings in in toml uh, sense. So when you update that, the only the only next thing you well on the next thing you would need to have uh, is a reconnect operation, which we currently do not support. So so uh, you would probably have to add some some kind of quick plugin to to call touch connect touch disconnect. Yeah, I mean I could do ah because I have to I have to to write the the bridge file again. Ah, I see. Okay, so restart yeah, yeah, exactly. would not work, right? Ah, okay, I see. exactly. Well, I suppose something. Okay, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to say because then I would say I'll say un unrecommended things. Uh, but there is another way which, which, yeah, uh, which could work. Could take yeah, okay. you could manually modify the bridge file, but that's certainly not recommended for production. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the answer. But okay, so you already considered this somehow a little bit. Yeah. And more, uh -huh. if you if you have the deployment option that it could be generated from the synergy itself, then it could be also, I think, uh, some step to add it automatically here to the smart rest templates. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it can be combined. You're right. Yeah. I I think guys, you know, if 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 you try use the feature and and provide us the feedback, we, I, I think we're more than happy to update it. If it's used by customers, and certainly we, we we can prioritize this. Obviously. So so yeah. Feel welcome to use 0 0.7 and let us know what you think. What, what would you like to improve? What, what features would you like to see? Your UX maybe change. Uh, talking about using the feature, uh, can mm -hmm. you can you can we 
specify a typical use case because I would assume, for example, using operations, we have now the operation plugin for configuration, uh, configuration plugins for sending measurements. We have like the contract with the uh, uh, general measurement TH agent. So um, I'm, I'm trying to think a way where I would add a template and use that template, or is it more like intended for people writing plugins? I'm not sure what to, to say on, on this one. Uh, I mean, it, 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 in general, it was we, we were asked to support Cumulus uh, custom template. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think we were given uh, the use case at the moment. Like, like properly, you know, how to set it up, how to demo this, like, like with the customer. But I suppose Murad or, or Stefan, you, you could help out with that maybe? Are you asking me? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? No, I, I, so, 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 so deriving a use case so, so we can have something more tangible in, in terms of demoing the, the, the uh, custom template, you know, how, how a customer would use that. So, so what? Template would be defined. How, what, what kind of messages the device would send, or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or just like, in yeah, terms of, we... of in, in the synergy context. I mean, in general, I understand with with the like say classical agents, you would use smart rest templates a lot because that's the way they're pushing data to to mm -hmm. Comolosity. But a lot of this should be abstracted away by synergy, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, are there any other questions, maybe? Okay. Thank you so much. That's all I have to show and say. Back to you, Irina. Thanks a lot, Lucas. So it was our last demo planned for today. Uh, thanks for listening and joining our demo. Uh, when the release is Lot seven. Is ready. Uh, I'm going to announce on the Discord channel. Then uh, you can try all new features. Okay, and thanks everyone, and have a nice day.